Greetings theists and non-theists, I'm the Atheist Paladin, and I am doing a reply to a person named James uh, J. Sloan777, and he made a reply to a video to which Open Air Atheist made, and some of the errors to which he made are completely egregious and reek of ignorance. But some of the things he says I hear over and over again, so I hope I deal with these comprehensively. Because this dumbass claims need to stop. And one of the th he made three claims I'm going to deal with in this video. So the first one is that atheist regimes have murdered more than the Crusades or whatever. Um, number two, Nietzsche influenced Nazi philosophy. Uh, or Nietzsche, correct pronunciation. I typically read the works of Nietzsche, and I don't recall that part. But uh, we'll get to that, we'll get to that. And that, that Hitler supported evolution, which in turn to his racism and eugenics. Or, had it, or that these Darwinian influences led him down these sort of paths. Right. Uh, well, first off, let's get our way with the easiest one. Atheist regimes. Well, we're, we're going to talk about Hitler, so he doesn't really count, but we'll get into that. But such as Stalin, Hitler, or Stalin, Mao, Pol Pot, these were atheists, right? Well, where do the deaths come from in these nations? Well, with Lenin and Stalin, um, well, they were insane. They were uh, very, uh, what's the word? Paranoid, yes, they were very paranoid. And so there were a lot of political purgings. Out of the name of atheism? No. And then they also carried out uh, a lot of farming techniques that worked under the Markian evolution, and he didn't tolerate his scientists saying anything else. And so a lot of people died because they were using the wrong techniques. The Markianism doesn't work. So a lot of people died from starvation. So again, to atheism? Not in this case. And what's ironic is, is that under the USSR, there was little Russification, and sometimes uh, they had to sort of get the community together in order to give a sort of identity. And sometimes they did that by mandating uh, R uh, Russian Orthodox Christianity in some areas in order to give them identity. So even though, you know, Hitler and Stalin themselves were atheists, they actually instituted these sort of things. Very interesting. And, by the way, uh, Lenin couldn't get into power without the support of the church. Just throw that out there. Mao, his problem was pretty much as the same as with Stalin's farming techniques with the Lamarckian evolution. And again, that's where the most of the deaths come from. And Pol Pot, he wanted to maintain his uh, tyrannical power by killing everybody who was educated. So therefore, anybody who owned a Bible proved that they could read. Thus, people who killed who owned a Bible. And that's where the part of the Great Purges. Pol Pot. But even if we take this all into consideration, Humanity now, in the 20th century, has the largest amount of technology and knowledge available to us. And so our population grows from that benefit. And also, we also suffer from that benefit. So, you know, you can not only have more people, you can kill more people by technology. So to say, well, is atheism is the greatest evil? No. They were all communist regimes, 
and atheism has no link to communism whatsoever. We just don't believe in a god. I'm personally a libertarian. Some are anarcho-capitalists, some are anarcho-syndicalists, some are, some are socialists, some are republicans, some are democrats. So, I don't see any implicit link between atheism and communism, so this hard argument fails utterly to make atheism as bad as religion. You just sent, sent, can't simply kill someone in the name of atheism. If a state mandated that you have no religion, that wouldn't be state mandated atheism, that's state mandated anti-theism, which is quite different. So what would have stopped these sort of things? Mm, secularism, separation of church and state. Just a thought, put that out there. Now the works of Friedrich Nietzsche and his ideals of the Ubermensch. And he stated several things that Nietzsche was um, anti-Semitic and anti-Christian and all this BS and anti-communist. Well, some of it's right. He is anti-religion in the sense. So he is anti-Christian in that sense. But he isn't against Christians. He's just against the religion. And further, the ideas of the Ubermensch um, yeah. Eke homo. He speaks against anti-Semitism and Darwinian uh, constructs of his ubermatch. Point refuted. He also goes in great detail of refuting Wagner and Schopenhauer in this book. So where does this Nietzschean, uh, or Nietzsche, and Nazi philosophy connection come with. Well, if you were read the um, book by Walter Kaufman on Nietzsche, you would see that none of this is done willingly. He, of course, went insane in uh, 1888 or 1889, and his sister took over his estate and works. And guess who she was married to? She was married to Wagner, I believe, or someone of that sort of political influence. So during this great pan-Germanism that was happening in the 19th century, and of course Wagner and Schopenhauer all influenced these sort of um, Prussian racist ideals that fed into Nietzsche, or fed into the Nazis. And so how Nietzsche got involved is because of his sister twisting his own works towards that end. Nietzsche would never allow it, and he was vehemently against Wagner and Schopenhauer. So, you're saying that Nietzsche influenced Nazi philosophy? He would absolutely refuse. If you'd draw magnets to Nietzsche and put them in a copper coil, he would turn over his grade so fast that we'd probably solve the energy crisis. So, Nietzsche didn't want these works. His works about these. Ubermensch was about existentialism and claiming your own sort of uh, destiny and your own and your own responsibility. So Hitler supported evolution. He was influenced by. Darwinian ideas. Well, of course, Darwinianism leads to racism and eugenics. Right. Uh, see in the video link below, in the box below, that uh, Aaron Ra actually goes quite over, the, over this quite well, but I would like to actually read a little bit. Let's go by uh, Inside the Third Reich by Albert Speer. Who is, by the way, one of the foremost uh, right-hand mans of Hitler himself. So, uh, page 95. Even after 1942, Hitler went on maintaining that he regarded the church as indispensable to political life. He would be happy. 
he would be happy that he said one of those times that talks at Oderselberg as someday that the prominent churchman who up was inserted to lead one of the churches or both possible the Catholic and Protestant churches to be reunited. Hitler thought himself as a great reformer when it came to Christianity. Now he did have a lot of criticisms about Christianity and um, he couldn't have done what he did without the support of Christian churches. Foremost by the uh, German Christians, i.e. the most of the Protestants, they viewed him quite well and that's what gave him, gave him most of the power that he needed up to the 1930s. And of course, uh, the, of course the Hitler youth did exert a lot of pressure against the Catholics and a lot of the stuff was anti-Christian or not anti-Christian but anti-Catholic away with your priests and your rights that's anti-Catholic and the thing is, is that I believe that Hitler was so in debt or so into the idea that he was such a great reformer that it was becoming a personality cult that the SS was coming a personality cult to him and he was, if he would have won the war, he would have set up himself as Messiah. And a lot of this um, is noted in like in the Third Reich, uh, in power, and and some some. If you just study, if you're if you're not ignorant of the Third Reich in the history, you would know that. But uh, let's go to. I thought I would mark this, but I'm close. Yeah, here we go. But really, was Hitler influenced by... by evolution and Darwinian ideas? Let's read on the nation and race in the first part, or the first volume, of his Mid Kampf. He's speaking about the mixing of races. To bring about this such development, nothing else would be a sin against the will of the eternal creator. Wow, that really makes me think of evolution. No. An evolution wouldn't an evolutionist wouldn't say such things, let alone a Darwinianist. Again, let's let's speak about racial purity here. Um, the consequence of racial purity is universally valid in nature. It is not sharp outward determination of the variation of the races, but their uniform characteristics in themselves. The fox is always a fox, a goose, a goose, a tiger, a ti the tiger, a tiger, etc. And these differences lie in most varying measures of fourth strength, intelligence, dexterity, endurance, etc. of the individual uh, specimens. But you'll never find that a fox, whose inner attitude might be, for example, to show in mandatory tendencies towards the geese. And similarly, there is no cat with friendly inclination towards mice. And on and on. But again, a fox is a fox? Fox always remains a fox. A, a goose? A goose? A tiger? A tiger? No, what is that? That sounds so, sounds so familiar. Really familiar. Oh, that's right. Creationists talk like that. His ideas about the racism and the superiority of races comes from religion. He really considered that his ideals came from getting rid of the Jews because they were Christ killers. Where does that come from but Christianity? Again, he's saying he'd done the Lord's work and that he would be doing a great favor for Christianity by killing the Jews. Now he built his racial superiority on uh, phrenology and physiognomics, okay? So he did nothing of the sort of reverencing Darwinianism or evolution. Further, eugenics is not compatible with evolution. Eugenics has been around a very long time 
Remember, be fruitful and multiply? Hey, that's positive eugenics. And go and lay and slay the Amaleks. That's negative eugenics. That's been around. Okay, so eugenics has always been around. The only idea is the different justification. The problem with eugenics is, is that it decreases genetic variability. Evolution, however, is the explanation of the increase of genetic variability. The diversity of life. So I don't know how you go from evolution, talking about the diversity of life, to eugenics where you are killing off and weeding out people and therefore shrinking the gene pool. It can only come from the flawed idea of survival of the fittest, which Darwin never said. A phrase to which Darwin never uttered, nor evolutionists uttered. It's a misunderstanding. It is nothing that Darwin has ever said. So thinking this, I think this is all bullshit. And it, time for these errors to be laid to rest. And I think I've pretty much done that job here. And you know what? You know what could have stopped all these wars? Secularism, my friend. The separation of church and state. And you don't need to be an atheist to be a secularist. So...